Are you an average above ground base enjoyer looking to dip your little toesies into the Chad underground way of life? Then I may have the perfect base design for you. Once you join us underground Chads, you'll quickly realize how inferior above ground living really is. And now let's get into the tour. Wait, what'd you say? No sunlight? Listen here, you little so, like all my previous underground bases, we have a completely hidden entrance. And the only way someone is going to find your base is if they use x-ray or they watch you enter. So, just be on the lookout. Now, to open this base, all we need to do is just throw any item on top of this specially designated block right here. As you can see, we've marked it out with a rose. You can use a piece of grass or whatever the hell you want. And yeah, all we have to do is just throw any item on top and the door will open. Now, before we head into the base, I'll quickly show you the redstone. So we can just destroy these two blocks here. And yeah, this is pretty much all the redstone there is to the actual door. We do have some hoppers and stuff over on this side, but this is all very, very easy to make. Just follow along with the tutorial and you shouldn't have any problems, unless if you're on bedrock, which I explain how to fix this for bedrock, hopefully. All right, and now we can head into the... Oh my God, dude, I forgot all these burly men were in here. I kind of like it though. <clears throat> okay, like I was saying, uh, firstly, walking into the base, we're greeted by four big crop field farms. And unlike a lot of my previous bases, these farms are actually very useful as we have 51 crops in one field alone. So that gives us a total of 102, 50, 153, 100, 200 and... 204 crops in total. So you and your family will not be going hungry anytime soon. And yeah, also at the end of all of these, we have this kind of neat little farm storage section. We've got a whole bunch of composters along the bottom. We've got some double chests, a single chest, and also some barrels as well. We've also got a cool little fluorescent light design along the top here. And if you really can't be bothered getting these end rods, then you can also just, of course, replace these with some lanterns instead. I also forgot to mention that with the entrance, we can actually grab the item back that we used to open the door with. And we can also press this button to close the door behind us. All right, and now we can head around to the back of the base where all of the uh, actual useful kind of stuff is. As you can see, we have this cool little checkered pattern pathway as well that leads throughout the base. And we also got it on the walls as well, just to keep it looking a little interesting. But yeah, starting on the left side over here, we just have our bog standard enchanting area. Although something to note is this does of course reach a full level 30. And we've also got some barrels tucked away on the sides here for you to store any like books and lapis lazuli. To the right of this, we have our storage area where we have 20 double chests in total. And yes, these top chests do open due to some stone slabs on the roof. Heading over to the next section, we have our crafting area, where we have a whole bunch of barrels along the top. For just some ease of use, you can store like whatever crafting items you want up there. We've got a bunch of decorations as well, and then hopefully all the crafting blocks you should ever need. Feel free to swap any of these out for something you feel is more useful. Like maybe if you don't use a grindstone, just replace it with like a sawmill or something. Heading over to the right once again, we have our bedroom, where we have this cool leaf design that I've used in a whole bunch of my builds. And then below it, we have three barrels. We've also got some pot plants over here, and then our bed, of course. Now, if you wanted to, you could of course extend this bed out to be bigger if you want to have more people in your base it's entirely up to you and now heading on once again we have our smelting area it's not very big i know this whole area is meant to be kind of expanded and i'll explain how to do that in a minute but yeah if you feel like you don't need blast furnaces or smokers then you could of course just replace those with some regular furnaces we've also got a bunch of details up here as well just to keep it looking nice and interesting into the next section we have our brewing area and like the crafting area we have a whole bunch of barrels along the top just for you to store your brewing ingredients and potions and stuff like that we've also got four brewing stands in total so you can do a whole bunch of brewing here and then we have an infinite water source here instead of a cauldron i just prefer using these as you can actually just keep using them instead of the cauldron running out and now onto the last section which is a new section i've never added to a base before which is a mine entrance and as you can see i am very lazy and uh <laughs> it just stops completely right here but yeah the whole idea of course is to just extend this as far down as you want to go and you can use this neat little rail system as well to quickly go down and back up from your mine shaft and uh, i will just quickly explain that this base is meant to be expandable and also completely modular. I've just quickly teleported here over to my ultimate underground base and as you can see all of the sections have the exact same width as the previous base so you can really just take any of these sections from any of my other underground base videos and just replace them with something else you want. And if you feel like you need more sections than this you can of course just push this entire back wall back even further and add more sections onto the right of this and to the left of your mineshaft here. And I mean there's pretty much an infinite ways you could expand this base. I mean you could add in an entire door right here and just keep going around the back or you could make like a basement to this and this isn't really like a starter base i'd say it's a bit too big to be a starter base but it's kind of the base you'd upgrade from your starter base and it's just something nice that you can expand pretty easily and yeah so that pretty much covers the entire tour of the base and if this seems like something that you want to create feel free to stick around and we'll get started on the tutorial right now <laughs> 
All right, so starting off, you're of course going to need an area similar to this one where we have the side of a giant hill or mountain. If you can't find an area like this, you can of course just go into like a cave or something like that and just make sure you're at least like five or six below the actual top of the ground surface. What the hell? So now what I'm gonna do is mark out where I want the entrance to be. And I'm just gonna do that by destroying a two by one hole in the side of the mountain. Now to the left of this is where we're gonna be adding our pistons. And we need to make sure we have like a pretty significant area kind of just covered up by uh, dirt or stone or whatever looks more natural to your area. So to fix this area, what I'm gonna do is add in some dirt blocks like so, and then I'm going to cover them up with some grass blocks. And then to make this look a little more natural, I'm just gonna extend this out like so, maybe even raise this up by an additional block and just pull this out a little more like that. And now if I add these stone blocks here, you can see we have something a little bit more natural looking. Next, what we need to do is make sure to actually remove these two blocks again and make sure that we have a block right here. So one block out and two blocks to the right of the doorway here. And yeah, this is where we're gonna be throwing our item on to open the door. So just make sure you have a block right here. And then to make it look more natural as it does look kind of weird having just a single block here, we can connect it up to the surrounding landscape and just kind of extend it like so. And next, what we can go ahead and do is head inside here and destroy an additional four blocks. So one, two, three, and four. And then at the very end here, we're going to be removing these two blocks and adding a spruce slab on this block here. This is just to mark out where the actual base is going to be. We're going to be getting back to this later as right now we're going to be adding in our door entrance design, redstone staff. All right. So starting off our entrance redstone, what we're going to be doing is heading inside of our tunnel here, just two blocks in and destroying a couple of blocks like so. Then we're going to leave these two stone blocks here and remove the two behind it and replace these blocks with some sticky pistons. Now we're going to clear out a little bit more of an area. So we're going to go four blocks past the pistons. This is one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to remove these blocks as well. Don't worry about this gap here. We'll be fixing this up later. And then I'm also just going to remove this wall as well, just to make things a little bit easier. And we're also going to remove down one layer as well. And uh, we're actually going to go down another layer. <laughs> My apologies. So now with all of this excavated, we're going to jump down and firstly add in our redstone behind our pistons here. So firstly, on the bottom piston, we're going to place a solid block. And then on top of that, we're going to place a redstone dust. Then down here, we're going to place another solid block and on top of that, a redstone torch. You should see at this point, both of your pistons should be activated. This is definitely going to work on Java Edition, but if you're on Bedrock, it might not work. I'm not entirely sure. I probably should buy Bedrock just to test these things. But if it doesn't work, what you can try as well is actually removing these blocks and placing a redstone dust on top of this piston as well. I'm pretty sure this should be possible on Bedrock, so just give that a try, placing the redstone on top of that. Next to the right of our redstone torch here, we're going to place a comparator facing in towards it, and then behind this comparator, we're going to be placing a couple of droppers and also a hopper. So directly to the right of the comparator, we're going to be placing a dropper that's facing away from it. And then to the right of this dropper here, we're going to just stand on top of it and place another dropper that's facing upwards. And then above this dropper, once again, we're going to place another dropper that's facing back towards the redstone torch. And then for the final block, we're going to place a hopper that's pointing down into our first dropper that we placed. Now in the bottom right dropper here, all we need to do is just place in any item. I'm just going to use a stone block. And then to test it all out, we can place a stone button on this bottom right dropper and press the button and we should see that our piston door activates and then we can press it again to reactivate it. So that's pretty much all of the redstone done for the actual entrance design. And now all we need to do is actually add in the way that we can throw the item outside and hook that up to all of this redstone. And uh, now we can actually remove this button as well. We don't need it anymore. Actually, we should probably reactivate the door so we can get back outside first. So first starting right here directly below the pistons we're going to place our first redstone dust and then we're going to go to the right and then we're also going to destroy this stone block here one block above and place another redstone dust. This is going to be for the button on the inside. Then we're going to be adding a repeater right here and setting this to four ticks of delay. This is so when you activate the button from the inside you have enough time to run out of the base before it closes behind you. Now what we're going to do is snake this redstone dust all the way around here and then we're finally going to place another redstone repeater connected into this bottom right dropper here. Now we're going to destroy a couple of blocks like this all the way down. This is going to make sense while we're doing it later. And we're actually just going to place another block here so that we can get back out. Next, we're going to head to the end of our entrance here. And to the right, we're going to be digging a two block long extra little tunnel here. And we're going to extend this up to be four blocks high in total. And we can remove this block as well. And then we can do the same to the left side over here, except we're only going to do it by one block. And then on the bottom block here, we can actually add in our stone button. And if I actually remove this block real quick, you can see this is exactly where our redstone is connected up to and we can just chuck our button on and we can use this button to close and open the doors as well. 
Now turning back to the right side, we're actually going to be removing this block here and replacing it with a barrel. Then to the right of this barrel, so facing back towards the exit of the base, we're actually going to dig a little tunnel all the way down to the end. And as you can see, this is the tunnel that we excavated just before. And once we've reached some grass here, as you can see, this is definitely going to be our grass block that we placed, as you can see right here. And then one block below this grass block, we're going to remove whatever's down there. And then we're also going to remove another block down below that as well. Then we're going to remove these extra two blocks as well so that our barrel is completely exposed. And we're also going to be adding in a little hopper chain that connects all the way down to the end here underneath our grass block. It might be a little bit tricky to add in the final hopper, so you might have to remove your block, place in your hopper, and then place the grass block back like so. Now heading back down to our tunnel, we can next place a rail on top of this hopper that is underneath our grass block and place in a minecart with a hopper. And now we can test this out by heading back outside, throwing any item on top of this grass block. You should see it should instantly disappear and then we can head back inside and find it inside of our barrel. If it isn't in your barrel, make sure to just check any of these hoppers to see if it's stuck in here. And if it is, then your hopper isn't facing the right way. Now heading back to here, we can remove these blocks and find our original tunnel that we just talked about. And so now we're gonna be adding in a redstone comparator and then in front of that, a redstone repeater. And this is so the door can actually detect that an item has been like kind of sent through this hopper chain and then it'll open up the pistons. Now all that's left to do is head back around here to our original kind of redstone area and then just connect this up with an extra piece of redstone dust. Now before we seal everything up, let's actually once again just quickly test the door. So throwing an item on top of here should close the door and then we can throw another item on top to open it up. Now that we know our door is working correctly, we can go ahead and patch up all of the holes here and then head back around here as well and replace our dirt blocks as well. And there we go. So that's it for all of the entrance redstone. Next up, let's quickly patch up this little hole that is to the right of our barrel as well. And we're actually going to be adding some blocks back like so. And then finally, some upside down stone stairs directly above the barrel so that we can actually still enter it. And now it's time for a whole bunch of excavating. So I'd recommend grabbing yourself a nice Giga Chad pickaxe like this one right here as we're going to be doing a lot of excavating. Excavating. So to get all of the measurements right, let's first go ahead and stand right here directly in front of our spruce slab. And then we're going to be digging a five block high tunnel. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to be doing this by 14. So this is one, two, and 14. And so before we continue on, I'd actually just strongly recommend double checking your count here. So starting from the first block we destroyed, we're gonna count along the floor and make sure that we have 14. So one, two, three. 14. Now with that done, we're going to be pushing these left and right side walls out by 15, starting on the same block that we destroyed first. So on this block here, just to mark it out, we're going to go one, two, and 15. We're also going to make sure that this is five blocks high as well. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to pretty much do this to this entire left side wall, making sure it's of course five blocks high, all the way down to the end, and then doing the same thing on the right side as well. Now with all of the area excavated, we're unfortunately not done yet. We have to head directly to the back end of the base here, making sure that we're still in line with our entrance. And so next, what we're going to be doing is actually destroying a strip like so. That's actually going to be one block above. And then we're going to jump up here and then excavate an additional six blocks so seven including the one that we already destroyed so this is one two and seven so now just double checking we got the distance right we can stand directly on this block here and count one two three four five six seven and now like we did to this area we're going to be pushing these walls left and right by 17 this time so one two three 16 and 17. Uh, as you can see, I've got some water in here that I have to deal with. These are also only going to be four blocks high and yeah, extending them to the left and right by 17 blocks. And there we go. Once you're done, you should have something looking like this. And that is pretty much all of the excavating that we're going to have to do for the base, thankfully. And now before we can actually get started in creating everything for the base, what we need to do now is make sure that every exposed block here is a stone block. So we're going to have to go all the way around the floor, walls, and the ceiling and just replace everything that isn't stone with some stone. Okay. And now with all of that done, we should have a nice clean looking base like this. And now what we're first going to be adding in is all of the back sections first, as I feel like they're probably more important than the farms. And you'll probably want to build those first anyway. So what we're going to first do is of course head to this back wall here. And we're also going to make sure that we're still in line with the entrance here. And we're first going to be adding in our pillars with some stripped spruce wood. So firstly, let's place a block here just to mark out the center of the base. This one is just going to be temporary. Now to the left of this, we're going to count three blocks. So one, two, three, and place a block here. 
and then we're going to do the same to the right one two three and place a block and now we can remove this block as well so this is going to be our first section where our bed is going to be and now we can add in all of the base of the pillars for the rest of the sections so for all of these we're going to be leaving a gap of five blocks in between these so one two three four five and then place a block on the next one then we're going to do the same again to the left one two three four five and place a block then as we turn to the left here for our enchanting area we're actually going to have to place in two stone blocks like this and then we can add in the base of our pillar here and now we can head back over this way and start adding in our pillars to the right of this one so leaving a gap of five once again add in your next pillar do the same over here and then we're going to repeat exactly what we just did over there so add in two stone blocks here and then on top of the first one add in the base of your spruce pillar now what we can do is actually jump down here and then in between these two stone blocks that we added in we can actually add in a whole bunch of spruce slabs this is of course just our step up to the back area of the base now with all of that done we can go ahead and just go around to all of the pillars and raise them up all the way to the top of the ceiling now with all those pillars added in let's add in some spruce slabs in between all of these at the very top on the ceiling now behind all of the back pillars here we're actually going to add in a strip of stone behind just the pillars and we're going to do that to every single one at the back of the walls and then for the right side over here for the mine we can actually just fill in this entire section of stone here and we can just leave it like this for now until we actually get back over here next let's add in some lanterns to the ceiling and to make this nice and easy all we're going to do is just align ourselves with the center of this section here on the left side and then also we're going to align ourselves up with the center of the section to the right of this and then we're just going to look straight up and chuck a lantern on right here and now we're just going to do this exact same thing for every single section making sure that we're staying in line with this area over here or this one and then we're just going to go in line with this section look straight up and add a lantern on now we can add in our checkered polished andesite to the floor and to do that what we can do is just head back to the middle section here so this is where the bed is going to be in line with the entrance and we can head to the left pillar here and count three blocks in front of the pillar so one two three and then we can replace this block here with a polished andesite now to the right of this we're going to branch off like so creating a kind of checkered pattern and then we're going to go back to one block and then back to two and then back to one and we're just going to keep doing this all the way down to the right of the mine entrance over here and we're going to stop once we reach this block right here so one block to the left of the pillars now we can head back over where we started and then of course extend this over to the left side of the base as well and now while we're at it, we might as well just add in the same checkered pattern down here as well. So firstly, aligning ourselves with the entrance, we're going to jump down and spaced one block away from the spruce slabs here. We're first going to start by placing two polished andesite like so. Then like before, we're going to go back to one and then back out to two and just keep repeating this pattern up until we reach this point right here. Now let's head back to the back walls and to the left and add in our enchanting area. All right, so firstly for the enchanting area, we're going to place on our enchanting table. This is going to be one block behind the pillars here and then also directly above that we can add our lantern on now on the left and right side we can add in a single bookshelf like so and then we're going to place another one on top as well and in between these we can add in some barrels too now we're going to have to do a little bit more excavating, unfortunately. So directly behind these bookshelves, we're going to remove this square of stone blocks like so. And here's the water back coming to annoy me. Now, now with that hole patched up, we can actually just fill in the surrounding area here with a whole bunch of bookshelves all the way up to the ceiling and pretty much just covering the entire walls like so. And now just to show you, this does of course reach a full level 30. And so that's it for the enchanting area. Now let's turn to the right and add in our storage area. And for this one, we're going to have to do a little bit more excavating. Just a single layer of stone here and we're also going to have to make sure that all of the exposed blocks are some stone blocks and then we're also going to have to remove these blocks on the ceiling as well just one layer and replace them with some stone slabs this is of course to make sure that our top chests do open and now we can just fill in the entire area with a whole bunch of double chests now it might be kind of tricky to add in these last chests so we can actually just remove part of the wall here and just add in the rest of the chests and replace the wall and now that's it for our storage area next heading on to the right section we can add in our crafting area starting off by adding in some barrels along the top then directly below these barrels we can firstly add in an anvil on the left then followed by a smithing table then a crafting table a loom and finally a grindstone now directly above the crafting table here we can add in a single spruce slab and then to the left and right of that a couple of spruce doors then on the wall behind this we can add in a checkered pattern of polished andesite just to make it look a little bit more interesting and then we can add on a few little decorative blocks so firstly on the center of the shelf here chuck on a flower pot with a blue orchid inside to the left of that we can place a 
few candles and ignite them with a flint and steel. And then on the right side here, we can add on a lantern. Make sure that it's actually on the block, not hanging as uh, it might look kind of weird. And then finally, on top of the anvil over here, we can place another flower pot, this time with an azure blue it. And that's it for the crafting area. Heading over to the next section to the right, we can add in our bedroom. And for this one, we're gonna have to excavate an additional two layers of blocks like so. And once again, we're gonna have to replace all of these blocks as well to stone, so yeah. So firstly, let's add in some stripped spruce wood blocks on the left and right corners. And then in between those, let's add in three barrels. Then one block spaced above this, let's add in three oak leaves. And then below and above these leaves, let's add in a spruce slab like so. And then we can surround the rest of the leaves here with some spruce trapdoors. Now for the back wall, let's add in a simple checkered pattern starting in the bottom left corner. Then we can skip a block and add one up here. Then we can add one in the center as well. Then over on this corner, this corner, and in the center as well. Next on top of the left and right stripped spruce blocks, let's add in some flower pots. And then on the left side, we're gonna add a blue orchid and on the right, a lily of the valley. Then before we add in our bed, let's actually add in two red wool blocks below it. Then we can add in the bed. This kind of makes it look like that the surrounding red carpet that we're gonna be adding is kind of extending underneath the bed as well. And then to finish off the bedroom, let's add in a lantern right here. Now onto the next section, the smelting area. And firstly, what we're gonna be doing is adding in a row of furnaces on the very bottom row here. And then at the top, we can add in three blast furnaces and then two smokers. If you don't want any blast furnaces or smokers, feel free to just replace them with regular furnaces or whatever the hell you want. Then directly below this top layer of furnaces, we're gonna add in firstly a spruce slab on the corners and then followed by some spruce trap doors. And then in between these two spruce trap doors, let's add in a lantern. Now for a couple of decorative blocks on top of the left side, furnace here let's add in a large amethyst bud then on the central one an extinguished campfire and then directly to the right of that a flower pot with an azalea and I almost forgot we we're also going to add in a nice checkered pattern on the wall behind just like so on to the next section the brewing area and firstly what we're going to be doing is adding in a strip of barrels along the top and then also adding in our same kind of supporting shelf design that we just did over there so slabs in the corners followed by some spruce trap doors with a lantern in the center then on the back wall we're also going to be adding in the same checkered pattern like this we're not going to be Standing it down here as we're going to be adding in some more polished andesite blocks like so followed by a backwards polished andesite stairs in the center like so next on top of the solid polished andesite blocks we're going to add in some brewing stands and then inside of our backwards andesite stairs we can place in some water and also above this we're going to add a tripwire hook just to look like a little tap and then finally in front of all of these polished andesite blocks here let's just add in some spruce signs and that's it for the brewing area. Next, heading over to the mine entrance. On the left wall here, we're first gonna be adding in some upside down stone stairs on this block here. And then we're gonna surround it with some solid stone blocks, except for the ones below it. Then directly below the stairs, let's add in a stone button. And then directly below the stone button, we can add in a powered rail. Now we're gonna extend this rail out two blocks to the right. And then we're gonna go one block back towards for where the actual mine entrance is going to be. So what we're first gonna do is excavate this entire wall of stone here. On the left and right sides, we're gonna add in some spruce logs. And in between them at the top as well, let's connect them together with some spruce slabs. And then also in front of these spruce slabs, we can add in a lantern. And then we can just pretty much continue our mine entrance on from here. So we can just excavate all of these blocks and then just start going down. You kind of know how to make a mine entrance. You don't really need me to show you how to do it, but uh, yeah. Just make sure your left side here is going to be solid blocks so that you can extend your rails all the way down. Also to add in your powered rails, just destroy two blocks below, add in a redstone torch, place your block back and then add in your powered rail. And then yeah, besides all of these rails we're going to just add in some stone stairs like so all the way up here and then yeah just pretty much extend this just as far down as you want to go all right and now that's all of our top sections done now it's time to move on to the sections for the farms so firstly we're going to head over to this pillar here and then we're going to go diagonally to the right and add in another pillar that extends all the way up to the roof like so then we're going to leave a gap of five like we have done previously so one two three four five and then add in another pillar and then we're going to do the same thing once again adding a pillar all the way at the end here touching the front wall then then along the top, we're going to connect them up using some spruce slabs. And then behind all of these pillars as well, we're going to be adding in a strip of stone blocks. Now along the top in each section, let's add in a strip of barrels. In both of the corners, we'll add in some spruce slabs and also some spruce trap doors coming away from those with a lantern in the center. Then one block below this, let's add in a chest and then beside that another chest and it actually extended into a double chest and then we'll do the same thing on the right side. Then below this on each side, we'll once again add in some spruce slabs and connect them up with some spruce trap doors. Then at the very bottom here, let's add in a whole row of composters and then in front of the central one, we'll add in a spruce trap door and then beside that, we'll add in a whole bunch of spruce signs like so. And so now let's quickly repeat this on the other side as well. So once again, add in your chest directly below the lantern, then add in a double chest beside that and also on the 
other side and then on the corners and then connect them up with some spruce trap doors and then finally down below add in a row of composters with a spruce trap door on the central one with some spruce signs beside those. And now we're just going to repeat this exact same thing on the other side. Now with our walls added in on each side, let's add in our lights for the farms. So firstly we're going to head in front of just any section and we can add in and directly in front of the spruce slabs on the top here on the central one we can add in a polished andesite block. Then we're going to place a total of nine polished andesite slabs coming away from this. So one, two, three eight and nine and then at the end of this we're going to place another polished andesite block then we're going to place a lever on like this and we can turn the lever on so that it's pointing in towards the other lever that we're going to be placing right here and we can turn this one on as well then holding shift we can right click on this lever to place in our first end rod and then we're just going to extend these end rods all the way down to the other lever just like that and so that's it for the light design i'm just going to now quickly repeat this in every single section now with all of our lights added in we can head over to just any section and start adding in our farms so to start adding in the dirt we're going to just go in line with our central composter here and then one block away from it on the ground and remove these three blocks here and we can just replace them with some dirt then coming back we're going to do the same thing except extending it out once again to the left and right and then we can extend this rectangle all the way down to our pathway here and we're going to stop one block before the light and we're going to come back in and then just add in a section of three long like similar to how we did at the start here then we can branch back out this way and then just remove all of this stone and replace it with some dirt so there we go, that's one of the sections for the farms done. Now I'm just going to quickly do the same thing on the right side here. So we're just going to replace these three blocks here with some dirt, then we're going to branch out, and yeah, you get the picture, we're just doing the exact same thing we just did over there. Now with both of our fields added in, we need to actually add in some water so that our farmland doesn't just turn back to dirt. And to do this, we're going to be replacing some stone blocks with some stone slabs and water. So if we look directly in the center here of our fields, so like kind of in the center of this area, we're actually going to go two blocks to the left, so one, two and then we're going to replace this block here with a slab. We'll do that in just a second. So we're going to do the same thing going to the right. So one, two, and remove this block. Then in line with these, we're going to remove these stone blocks as well and replace those with slabs. And then the same on this side as well. So now let's just add some slabs in these and then also a water bucket as well. And then we can just go ahead and till all of these dirt blocks into farmland and then plant just whatever we want. I'm going to go with wheat and also carrots, just alternating between the different fields. And now with our two farms added in, we're just, of course, repeating this exact same thing over here on the left side. Okay, and now with all of our farms added in, we're just gonna now add in some finishing touches to the base. So firstly, in between our two lights here on the pathway, we're going to be adding in a lantern like so. And then we're gonna do the same in between these two lights as well. Then at the door here, we're going to add in some upside down stone stairs in these corners just to make it more of like an archway. Just looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. To the left and right of this on these bland walls here, we're going to be adding in a checkered polished andesite pattern like we have done on the floors. Starting on this block here, so one block spaced away from the entrance. Then we're gonna branch it out to two blocks back to one block and yeah you get the picture we're just doing this all the way up until this point right here one block spaced away from this pillar and now we're just going to repeat this exact same thing of course on the other wall as well and with that we're now fully done with the entire secret underground base so if you enjoyed this tutorial be sure to leave a like and subscribe as it helps me out a lot more than you think thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video